A little over five years ago, Cadillac expanded their SUV portfolio in America with the introduction of the subcompact X-T4. Now at the time, the X-T4 was designed to do battle with the very popular BMW X1, Mercedes-Benz GLA, and Audi Q3. Now in that time frame, the subcompact SUV segment in luxury, the luxury space has continued to grow and expand. Therefore, last year, Cadillac decided to give the X-T4 a pretty thorough refresh, which includes all new styling in the front, new wheel designs, and an all new interior with the largest in the class 33 inch curved LED display, which has essentially been taken out of the Cadillac Lyric. So as you can see this week, Cadillac has loaned us this stellar black metallic X-T4 premium luxury. And the big question I want answered for those of you who are looking for a small luxury SUV that wears a Cadillac badge that has upgraded tech, how does the 2024 X-T4 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling changes that Cadillac introduced last year, let me go ahead and pop the hood and remind you guys what's powering this thing. Now, unlike some competitors, Cadillac only offers this vehicle with one engine choice, and it's a relatively powerful engine for the segment, a two liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder. Now this engine was an all new design when Cadillac first introduced the X-T4 back in 2019. It's the company's corporate two liter turbo direct injection four cylinder, making 235 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. It all goes out through a nine speed automatic transmission and front wheel drive is gonna be standard for around $2,500 extra. You can get the Cad our Cadillac's twin clutch all wheel drive system. Fuel economy for this model is 23 in the city, 28 on the highway. It has roughly a 16 gallon fuel tank. You're looking at around 380 miles of range on a full tank that's using regular gas. Premium is recommended for maximum performance. Cadillac doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. The last time we tested one of these almost two years ago, we got seven and a half seconds. So we'll see if we can get this time with this 2024 model. It has a top speed of roughly around 140 miles an hour. This vehicle can tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds. And because it is larger than the other vehicles in the segment, the X-T4 is a little bit heavier. As this model sits, it weighs in at just over 4,000 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, first of all, this particular one that I'm showing you is the premium luxury trim. It's technically the mid trim. The luxury is gonna be standard. The sport trim is actually above this trim slightly. Uh, and you can see my tester is, is painted in this stellar black metallic. You can see it has a lot of metallic fleck in it. It goes well with the satin bright chrome work that you're gonna find along the Cadillac uh, grille with the Crest logo. You can see it has a new freshened front end where it has an, the latest interpretation of their art and science design theme where you have this LED daytime running light. Light, LED turn signal, LED uh, low beams and high beams down there. No fog lights, but you can see the front end has been completely redone where it tries to resemble a little bit uh, a family resemblance to the Cadillac Lyric. Overall, let me know in the comment section below if you guys prefer the pre-refresh model or you prefer this refresh model. Keep in mind the sport trim will have a different grille with blacked out elements. Uh, and a little bit more of an aggressive air intake design to give the sport again uh, more of a sportier look. Now moving around the side profile, this vehicle actually shares an architecture with the Chevrolet Equinox and the Buick Envision. Uh, so this is again a subcompact SUV, but at 181 inches long with a 109 inch long wheelbase, this is a little bit longer, about four to six lo inches longer versus if it's competitors like the BMW X1, the Lexus UX for example. Uh, but again, it still has really nice proportions to it. Uh, I think that the design theme fits very well, of course, with the Cadillac family. Now, my test car for an extra 1100 bucks has a 20 inch wheel with the multiple spoke design with this kind of machined gray inner pocket. Uh, it's riding on a continental uh, all season tire. Uh, and you can see the tire size for this vehicle, uh, if I can find it, is a 245 by 45 R20. So again, nice size wheel, an 18 inch wheel is gonna be standard. This vehicle has roughly 6.7 inches of ground clearance. So you're not gonna be taking this vehicle very far off road. You can see the wheel arch trim is unpainted. I kind of wish it was actually painted black. I believe the sport trim may give you painted fender arches, but I'm not entirely sure. You can see there's a, a Cadillac logo over here, which looks nice. The mirrors are power folding body colored, integrated turn signals. There's a full 360 camera on this car. And then you can see here, there's some bright chrome work for the roof rails. There's a panoramic sunroof for an extra 1500 bucks, more chrome along the belt line trim and along the door handles. Uh, keep in mind, you can black that out if you guys go for the sport trim, but moving around to the side profile of this vehicle, you can see, I always liked the boxier proportions of the X-T4. 
Although I definitely think that some of the bigger Cadillac models have you know less stubbier proportions to it. Now at the rear, you can see the design practically looks unchanged to me. You can see you have that big, tall LED taillight design that Cadillacs are known for. This model also has a digital camera review mirror, like the spoiler with the fact that the wiper is kind of hidden underneath the rear spoiler, which is nice. There's some badging at the back here to show that you have all wheel drive. And also the 350T is supposed to be the torque in Newton meters, not like the displacement of the engine. You can see there are uh, dual chrome exhaust tips, although those are kind of like a fake piece going into the actual bumper, but the exhaust is actually behind it, so it's not technically fake. Uh, but overall, I think the rear still is a relatively attractive design, uh, but I do think uh, that the look of the car is starting to show a little bit of its, of its age compared to the newer Cadillac models. But opening up the cargo area, you can see because this vehicle is larger than its competitors, you're looking at around 25 cubic feet of storage space with the second row seat up, which is definitely usable. If you look underneath here, there's a usable amount of space underneath the floor. Uh, no spare tire. Instead, you just have a fix a flat kit. If you fold down the second row seats, it expands the cargo to a little over 52 cubic feet. Again, that's a little bit more versus what you're going to get from some of the competitors. But I believe the Volvo XC40 still offers more uh, or, or more total maximum cargo space. But again, this is going to be among the more useful in the subcompact luxury SUV space. So the exterior of the 2024 XT4 got some pretty subtle changes, but the inside is where Cadillac really put in the money to upgrade this car uh, last year. But before we hop inside, let me first show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the intelligent access key that comes standard on every XT4. You can see it has the usual buttons for lock, unlock, remote start, power lift gate, and panic. Uh, the key fob is obviously a variation of a lot of keys that General Motors uses, but I do like the look of it. I like the feel, I like the Cadillac you know, logo on it. Uh, it's definitely a nice feeling key fob. Now, as you approach the vehicle, you can see traditional door handle as opposed to like pop out door handles on, you know, some other luxury brands. The mirrors also power fold. The vehicle does have a walk away auto lock feature that you can turn on and off. I have it turned on right now to unlock the vehicle. You have to uh, approach the vehicle with the key and then push the button on the outside of the door handles that will unlock the doors and unfold the mirrors for you. Now, the stellar black exterior of my test car is complemented very nicely by this two-tone Sedona and jet black full leather interior. Uh, the seats adjust on, I believe, 12 different ways. You have heated and ventilated front seats with two-person memory on the driver's side. You also have a power lumbar massage function, which is definitely nice. That's part of the comfort and convenience package that my tester has. It also rolls in the ventilated seats. In terms of the door panel materials, you can see Cadillac has definitely been stepping up their game. There's actual real leather with contrasting stitching uh, on the upper portion here. You have some genuine black ash wood, although it's a glossy variety as opposed to the matte finish. You have a padded center console or padded armrest here. Window controls, they're the typical GM window controls but they do have a nice high quality feel. Auto up down for the front windows, auto down for the rear, not auto up. You can see your mirror controls here. There's some hard touch plastic here with some storage. And then my test car also has the AKG 14 speaker upgraded sound system, which definitely sounds great if you guys are an audiophile. Now stepping inside the cabin, this vehicle has a little over six and a half inches of ground clearance. So it has a, a nice easy step in height, although it's a little bit on the low side for an SUV. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thumb. You can see that screen comes to life and wow, does it really make a great first impression. Love the way that looks. It's one continuous screen as opposed to two being two different, two separate screens. And then you want, when you wanna turn the vehicle on, you can see the start stop button is located here behind the steering wheel. And then the vehicle fires right up. It does not have a hybrid or mild hybrid system. So you can see the engine has a traditional starter noise. And then this screen here is actually gonna be standard on every version of the X-T4. It's a 33 inch curved OLED display. It's the same one that we found in the new Cadillac Lyric. So this is my first time kind of spending some time with this new infotainment system from Cadillac. And I'm really happy to see it in this interior. It's a huge upgrade versus the old eight inch system that we found in the previous generation where you had an eight inch system here and you had a combination of an analog and a digital speedometer and instrument panel in the pre-refreshed model. So this is a huge upgrade. In terms of the rest of the interior materials, you can see the jet, the Sedona uh, color leather continues onto the dash where you have real leather over the upper portion here with this really cool kind of stitching area that kind of resembles like the Cadillac logo, what you'll find in the Cadillac logo. You can see more leather stitching over the upper portion here, even leather stitching covering the, you know, area for the heads up display. So that's a definitely a nice touch. There's some real aluminum trim, some chrome trim, some real wood on the uh, door panel. So again, this interior rem really feels more like a Cadillac and less like a Chevy. So that was my biggest issue with the pre-refresh model. This is just a huge upgrade. The steering wheel, you can see this is uh, 
a Cadillac steering wheel, as you can see, with the power tilt and telescoping function. It offers a decent amount of adjustability and range. I wasn't expecting to find the power tilt mechanism and telescope mechanism, so that's definitely nice. You have steering wheel paddle shifters, you have a heated steering wheel, you have cruise control switches here. No super cruise on this vehicle because, again, Cadillac doesn't offer it on this car. Uh, your audio control information is over here. Um, and then if you look at the instrument panel, you can see that display uh, definitely looks fantastic. That's what your gauge display essentially looks like. You can kind of go over here to this side of the screen. You can also put your GPS function up here if you prefer. There's also a clean function if you want to just clean that up and just show a digital speedo. You can also put your trip information here and you can also adjust your heads up display uh, from this display over here. So again, this is definitely going to show fingerprints, but when it's nice and clean, it definitely gives you a nice modern look. My personal favorite is the gauge display. Uh, again, uh, which is great. And then over here, you can see we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So unlike the new Chevrolet Blazer EV, the Cadillac system still uses Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see the CarPlay only takes up this specific area, uh, which is still a very nice uh, addition. Uh, over here, you can see this is actually not utilized, but I like how Cadillac has continued the CarPlay background into the curved area, whereas in the Escalade, when I first you know, saw a screen like this, it was just completely black. So this is a nice, you know, fix of that. I would have loved to see the CarPlay kind of take up the entire screen still, which would be nice, but at least they kind of fixed the background and whatnot. So that's a great thing. Uh, going back to the CarPlay function, you can see most of you are going to use your map display anyways. It's really quick and snappy. Uh, it's really easy to use. You also have over there updates and Android Auto. Going back to the native system here, you can also pull up the GPS function, which is basically the same GPS that you're going to find in your home or your computer. Uh, which is definitely great. You can also go into the settings. You can turn on traffic information. And I think you can also go to a satellite view if you guys would like to. Uh, although for some reason, I'm not seeing that option here. Uh, going back to the Cadillac native system here, you can see the interface is pretty easy to use and understand. You can also pull up, pull up your full 360 camera. Uh, my test car, of course, has that with the technology package. You can also do an overhead view. You can do a side view where you can kind of scan around the vehicle as well. We can kind of do a perimeter scan, the graphics and resolution again, all fantastic. So really happy to see Cadillac doing a fantastic job there. Uh, your surround view, again, you can turn that on and off here. Uh, I'll go to an overhead view or a side view. So love the fact that this system all uh, is well integrated into the actual infotainment system. And it also has your Google, your Google Voice commands as well. So you can also use your voice to ask it to do certain things like, hey, Google, increase driver temperature to 72 degrees. Got it. Changing the temperature for the driver to 72 degrees. So as you can see, the voice commands work extremely well. I think most people are going to be pretty pleased with the entire system. So I'll be looking forward to seeing this implemented on every other Cadillac model moving forward. Now, down here, you can see there's some more leather stitching covering the center console area. If you open this up, you can see you have two USB charging ports, a C and an A. It's a nice felt area over here where you can kind of store your phone and cover that up. This controls the nine speed auto. There's a trigger on the side, push it up to go into reverse, kick it back to go to drive, push the P button to go to park. If you guys don't want to use the touch screen, you can also use this little rotary controller here. But again, this is kind of set up to be working extremely well with a touch screen. Uh, your auto start stop defeat button is here, stability control off is here. And then your drive mode selector, you can see if you push that mode, you can actually cycle between a two wheel drive or all wheel drive. So it'll either lock it in front wheel drive or lock it in all wheel drive. You can also push it again and it'll go to a sport mode, which automatically locks it in all wheel drive. There's also an off road mode, which also puts it in all wheel drive. And then going back to the tour, that's the standard mode. So if you just leave it in that, it defaults to two wheel drive, front wheel drive, and then you have to push it again to go to all wheel drive, which I don't like. I think the system shouldn't even offer a two wheel drive function. I think it'll probably confuse people who are not used to having to go through one step to switch to all wheel drive. So that's something to keep in mind. Over here, you can see your actual hard buttons for your automatic climate control, your heated and ventilated seats. There are some actual unused buttons here, your uh, hazard switches over here. I like how Cadillac gives you a mixture of buttons and knobs, which is great. You have a volume knob here, padded center console here, your wireless phone charging pad is here. If I open this up, you can see this is a pretty deep storage compartment with a power outlet over there. Yeah, that's lined with felt as well. This is a nice padded center console armrest, which is great. Uh, the seats in this vehicle, you can see I love the the Sedona brown leather interior. This is included if you guys go for the premium luxury trim and then check the option for the upgraded climate control package seats. You can see these are heated and ventilated. They are comfortable, but I do wish the headrest allowed me to kind of move it forward and back. This is just sticking too far forward for me. It's a little uncomfortable for my specific body type. Uh, above me here, you can see the panoramic glass roof is 1500 bucks extra, lets in a lot of light. There's also a retractable shade. It also opens up to vent air. 
very nicely. It actually opens up over the entire front seats, which is great. Some competitors don't give you the ability to actually vent air. You can also open it up entirely to make it larger, uh, which again, I love that feature. Open up the glove compartment here. You can see it's damped in line with felt. It's a bin style. There's a decent amount of storage in there. Uh, so that's great. So overall, you can see the front seat area is definitely nice. I'll also love the digital camera review mirror. Uh, and there are some you know, unexpected luxury and tech features in here, especially with this screen. This is the biggest screen that you're going to find in the Sump Compact premium SUV space. But let's go ahead and hop into the backseat area because this is where Cadillac, again, delivers a little bit more space than most of its rivals. You can see opening up the rear door, you can see Cadillac says there's 39 and a half inches of legroom back here, which is around four or two to four inches more versus what you're going to find in its rivals. You can obviously fold the seats down if you prefer to increase the cargo area. These seats don't recline, however, and they don't slide forward and back. But I love how the uh, Sedona brown interior is kind of carried over back here. Now, getting back here, you can see in terms of the space, as I get back here, this is where I'd have the seat to drive. Plenty of actual legroom space underneath here. Foot space is great. There is a hump that intrudes onto the middle passenger, but you have rear seat air vents. You have three level heated seats along with two more USB-C charging ports or an A and a C. Uh, you have storage pockets in each of the front seat backs. You also have an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. And then in terms of the headroom space, you can see for somebody my height, if I lean back, my head actually gets really close to the ceiling. So kind of keep that in mind if you're a taller folk, that lower roof line of this car does eat into the headroom space. So overall, the back seat definitely has roominess in terms of legroom, not much in terms of headroom. Remember, this is still a subcompact vehicle, so it's not super wide to allow three people across. But overall, this is definitely more space versus what you're going to find from some of the competition. So as the smallest and most affordable SUV in the Cadillac portfolio, the X-T4 is a very important gateway vehicle into the Cadillac brand. And it's kind of crazy to think that it's been about five years since Cadillac first introduced the X-T4. I was out in Seattle when I first drove this thing for the first time back in 2018. And for the most part, I liked the car, but I thought it felt a little bit too much like a Chevrolet Equinox. So obviously this new interior addresses that, which I'll get into in just a moment, but the powertrain for this car is pretty much unchanged. You still have a two liter turbo uh, making 235 horsepower 258 pound feet of torque that number is pretty much right on par with the rest of the class it's got a nine speed auto the last time i tested this vehicle about two years ago i got 7.5 seconds so let's go ahead and see what we can get this time in this 2024 model it's in sport mode now the auto start stop is off we'll just floor it there's no launch control shifts at around 5800 rpm the shifts from the nine speed are also smooth and refined and it has a very nice power band. It kind of just goes through the gear, the gears very nicely, keeps the engine right on boil. Zero to 60 in 7.06 seconds. So that's almost a half a second faster versus when I tested this vehicle about two years ago. Now, again, there are no powertrain changes, so not entirely sure how this model seems to be quicker but it's nice to see that this car is basically at seven seconds. You can get that consistently because remember, there's no launch control. I basically have it in sport, which also locks the twin clutch all wheel drive system in all wheel drive. And you basically just can do zero to 60 in that time all day long. Now that's on it on a pretty much level surface. Uh, let's try it here this time where it's a little bit uphill and see if we can get a similar time. Right around 3000 RPM is when the turbo kicks in. 7.59 seconds there. So about a half a second slower, but I'm also going slightly more uphill. So that time is pretty much on par with the competition. Although you will get a slightly faster zero to 60 time in something like the BMW X1, the Audi Q3, the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. All of those should be in the mid six second range. The Cadillac is about a half a second slower, but let's be honest here. Most people in this class don't really care about zero to 60 times. You just, all that matters is, is the engine smooth and refined. In this car, yes, uh, the noise gets a little bit loud as you push it past 5,000 RPM, but I don't think it's a noisy, rough sound. It just makes its presence known to show that you're trying to accelerate hard. The transmission is that nine speed auto. It's also a smooth and refined transmission, which I like and the ride quality in this car. Uh, this model has the fixed four-wheel independent suspension. If you guys go for the sport trim, you can get adaptive dampers on the car. I also have 20-inch wheels, uh, which should make the ride quality firmer, but I'm pretty happy to report that I think the ride quality in this car is very Cadillac-like. It feels smooth, but it also feels a little bit more on the firmer side. It's kind of got that nice blend between good handling and a good ride quality and a quiet interior. The steering in this car is also quick and sharp. There's not really much in terms of feedback, but 
Uh, I think for most people, you're going to get into this car and you're going to think it handles nicely. The size of this vehicle is nice because it feels relatively nimble. What isn't great, however, is the visibility. Uh, I think the pillars are a little bit too fat uh, for the A pillars and whatnot. Uh, that takes a little bit of getting used to. But let's put our foot down here. Now this system is all wheel drive, but it also is primarily front wheel drive. So as I turn the wheel there and put my foot down, I can feel the front tire spinning slightly uh, as it tries to send power and torque to the rear wheels, which again, other systems are pretty similar to that, but I just wish that the system was a little bit quicker reacting. I also don't like how when you basically start the vehicle up, so if you push the drive mode selector button here and you put it into touring mode, uh, the touring mode has two modes. There's either, there's either front wheel drive locked or all wheel drive locked. There's no automatic setting um, which I think is kind of a mistake. I think that some people may end up buying this car. You know, you're seeing the all wheel drive on the badge on the badge on the back, but if you don't actually push the mode button and put it into all wheel drive, it's going to lock this vehicle in front wheel drive. So case in point, I'll show you as I take a right here and I'll show you what it'll do. <laughs> it's spinning the front tires there because it's not sending power to the rear unless I push the mode button here to put it in all wheel drive. So if I push the mode button here, you can see the little icon there will switch from two wheel drive to all wheel drive. I really don't even think there should be a two-wheel drive setting. I think that for a car like this, for the type of buyer that's gonna buy this car, it should always be in an automatic all-wheel drive setting because if you think about it, somebody who doesn't really know cars or don't really, don't really understand that you have to actually do one step there, you're gonna drive this thing in the snow or in the rain, you're gonna be like, why is it slipping all the time from the front wheels when you know I bought an all-wheel drive car? So I think that's kind of a mistake. I'm really hoping that GM will eventually address that. But other than that, you know, the driving dynamics are nice. The seats are comfortable, although I will say that the headrest isn't great for me. It's kind of protruding a little too far forward, and I wish I could adjust it forward and back a little bit. You can make it go up and down, but not forward and back. Uh, in terms of driver assistance, this car has the driver assistance tech package, which rolls in the adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, automatic braking, all that stuff or the automatic braking is standard, but if you're looking for super cruise, that's op that's not available on this car. If you want adaptive cruise, that's optional. I think adaptive cruise should be standard, especially at this price point. So that's something that I've been kind of voicing to GM that I, they need to make the driver assistance stuff standard and then make super cruise an option. Super cruise, again, still is not available on this car, which is slightly disappointing. The uh, interior of this vehicle, I will say the update that they've made with this new Cadillac Lyric screen, the 33 inch screen, makes this car feel less like a Chevrolet Equinox and more like a Cadillac. So that's definitely a big improvement. It's also pretty quiet in here. When you're not pushing the engine, you can really you know, feel the fact that this is a luxury car. The wheels don't produ produce that much noise. There's not much road noise, not much wind noise, not much engine noise until you're really pushing the engine hard. Um, but overall, I get the sense that I'm driving a premium vehicle. And remember, this car competes with cars like the BMW X1, Mercedes-Benz GLB, Audi Q3, Lexus UX. Uh, in terms of fuel efficiency, this is where uh, the Cadillac does lag a little bit, although most vehicles in the segment don't offer any kind of electrified option. I've been averaging around uh, 24 MPG in mostly city driving in my weeks worth of testing. You're looking at around th 380 to 400 miles of range on a full tank via that 16 gallon fuel tank. You can put regular in this. You don't have to put premium, although I believe it's recommended for performance. If you want better fuel efficiency, go check out the Lexus UX. It's the only hybrid in the segment, and it'll do roughly double the MPG of this car, but it also has less power. The UX, I got, I tested a 0 to 60 of around eight seconds, so this is about a second faster, although Lexus just updated the UX with the new powertrain from the Prius, where it has almost 200 horsepower. Again, not as much as this car, where it has 235, but you are gonna find faster options in the BMW and in the Audi and the Mercedes. So I wish Cadillac would offer like a V version uh, to give us like, you know, more power from this four cylinder or stuff the twin turbo V6. I mean, obviously this powertrain is slightly unique to the Cadillac. You can't get this in like the Chevrolet Equinox, this car's twin or platform mate, but I'm happy to report that the updates the Cadillac has made have finally made this car feel less like a Chevy and more like a Cadillac. And I think for the basic mission of this car, what the typical buyer is, I think it drives nice. It's got a roomy interior. It's got visibility that takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, but it has very impressive tech now. Uh, and it also has a really nice look. I think this car looks really good on the outside and on the inside. So obviously, you know, there's a reason why this car continues to be one of the best selling. Actually, compared to the rest of the segment, only the Volvo XC40 outsells this car. So this is the second best selling subcompact luxury SUV in the US.
So with just under 23,000 units sold here in America in 2023, this represents the second best-selling subcompact luxury SUV that you're going to find. It actually outsold competitors like the BMW X1, the Audi Q3, Mercedes-Benz GLB, and the Lexus UX. Only the Volvo XC40 outsold this vehicle by about 5,000 units. So clearly, Cadillac is doing something right with this car. Now, after spending the week driving the revised version, I'm pretty happy to say that the issues that I had with the pre-refresh model have been addressed for 2024. Uh, the interior is a huge improvement. It no longer feels like a Chevy with that big 33-inch curved display. The engine offers just fine power. I mean, 0 to 60 in 7 seconds isn't going to break any records, but it should be sufficient for most people, especially the type of buyer that's going to go for this segment of car. In terms of the ride quality, it's good. In terms of the quietness, it's good. The interior is also on the more comfortable side, which I think people are going to appreciate. And this car, for the most part, is just average to slightly above average, but it's also lacking in terms of annoyances. If you guys are looking to purchase the X-T4, uh, Cadillac also has priced this vehicle very competitively. The base luxury version with all-wheel drive starts at around 41000 bucks. Add $2,500 if you guys want all-wheel drive. The premium luxury is around $43,000 to start. The Sport is also around $43,500 to start. My test car, of course, with the options that it has, there are a lot of options like the technology package, the climate package, the comfort and convenience package. With destination of $1,600, bucks, my tester here comes in at just over $54,000. I know fifty-four grand is a lot of money, but keep in mind you can also spec up the European arrivals to be in the $50,000 range. The Mercedes is the most expensive that can get to over $60,000. So there was a time where Cadillac's XT4 was on the high end. It still pretty much is, but I think Cadillac has also kept the pricing pretty much in line with the European rivals. When this car first came out, it was overpriced. Now it's kind of just more average because everything else has gotten more expensive, whereas Cadillac has kind of held the line on this car. But with all that said, I do think the XT4 is an excellent choice, but if you want something with better fuel efficiency, be sure to check out the Lexus UX because that's the only hybrid in the segment. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Cadillac XT4. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.